Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and this is my very first Grain War development log. I wanted to show you guys some of the stuff that I've been working on with Grain War, even some of my code, how I've been thinking through this, and maybe you guys can give me some ideas and help me out. I'd love to get some feedback from you. I know a lot of you are excited about the game and curious about the game, so I want to show it to you. So let's get started. The first thing I'll show you is I'll just run the game so you can see what I've been doing. I have all this set up to a controller. So I've got an, uh, a USB Xbox controller plugged in right now to be able to play the game. And it's taking a little bit to compile because it's a bigger file. Okay, so this isn't too impressive because I was messing around with something. <laughs> Let's see, I think P will go to an X room. Okay, here we go. So I've been messing around with some different lighting and kind of subtle shading and stuff on this. Um, and I've also been working on the artificial intelligence for the enemies. So before they would attack immediately once they saw you, now they stop and then jump at you. So he'll uh, run and then pause for a second and then jump at me. So it gives me a little bit of time to uh, dodge. Because this is the first enemy, so we don't want it to be too hard, you know. And uh, we want to be able to fight them like that. So I've added in some room shaking. And that's just a button I can press that will shake the room. So that'll be awesome when I get some more intense stuff to go along with this. And I really like this fireball. <laughs> so uh, one of the things I've been working on that I'll show you guys again later once I get a little further is room generation. And so I can go between these rooms and I still need to hook up the doors right now so that the doors work but eventually I'll have multiple different uh, rooms that it can choose from that are slightly randomly generated more like procedurally generated and I can cycle through these rooms and basically go on forever it'll be an infinite amount of rooms and I just leveled up so awesome there's uh, some of the stuff that I've been working on in the game and let me show you some of the stuff that I've been doing in code. So this right here is, if we go into movement, script move direction, this is my exact um, code for moving. And it doesn't all fit on the screen. It's a pretty long code. Uh, so this will handle any sort of movement. I just pass in, in the script, I pass in a horizontal access amount, a vertical access amount, a magnitude and a speed, and then move accordingly. And uh, there's some pretty cool stuff going on here. I check to make sure the absolute value of the horizontal axis, because I can pass a negative value for the axes. So I make sure that the absolute value is greater than the threshold because I, the reason I do that is for the controller input because <clears throat> the controller will pass in small values and I want to make sure that I'm only moving if it's a large value. Otherwise the player won't be touching anything, the character will be kind of moving around a little bit on the screen. It'll look weird. So then if I, <clears throat> if I am larger than the threshold on both of them, I will find the direction that I need to point based on the axis and then I will check to see if there's a collision a, a place meeting in that direction if there's not then I check the to see if my horizontal axis is larger than my vertical axis if it is then I move now this is all for a uh, this is for perspective the only reason I have to have this code in here is because of the perspective that I'm doing 
I want my player to move slightly slower when he's moving up and down uh, because of the perspective. Actually, slightly faster, I think. No, it's slightly slower. It's 0.9, so it's 90% of the original speed when he's moving up. This helps to make it feel like the depth is working in the game. So I check to see whether they're moving more horizontally or more vertically, and depending on which one they are, I move with a little bit different speed. And then I also check for individual collisions, because this checks for both the Y and X collision. And I also check for each individual collision, and this allows me to slide along walls. So if the player is moving up against a wall and moving towards the wall, but they're moving just a little bit to the right, they'll continue to move along the wall, sliding to the right, but they won't move into the wall. So that's why I'm checking for the individual values as well. Uh, one of the other things I wanted to show you that I've spent a lot of time working on is timelines. And I have, I've got a timeline start and a timeline finish script, and they're pretty simple. They just, they just run the timeline, like this one right here starts a timeline and starts at a certain position, sets it to running and loop to false. And what I do is I actually, if you'll come in, if you look at my enemy, uh, my enemy states, because I'm doing this whole thing on a state system like I'm doing in some of my other video tutorials that I show you guys. It seems to work really, really great for what I like to do. I like the method and uh, so it's, it works really, really well for me. If you see the chase state and then come in here, you can see this is my artificial intelligence right here. So I've got him in a stall state, right? And I clear the timeline. So I've got this timeline that I create for every single enemy. They have their very own timeline. So I clear that timeline. And then this is when, this is when the, the, um, the enemy sees the player. So if the enemy sees the player, if it's close enough to the player, and the state doesn't equal attack, so it's not already attacking, set the state to stall, set the time or clear the timeline, and then I add some moments to the timeline. So for some reason, Game Maker forces me to add the highest one at the start, then like go progressively down. I don't really know why, but whatever it took me actually a couple days to figure out why the heck my timelines weren't working when I had these in different orders and I realized that I just had to have it in this order so the highest ones first so I set it to at eight steps attack so it's gonna wait eight steps and then it's gonna attack um, at 22 steps it's going to stall and then at 82 steps, it's going to go into a wander state again. So it will be like trying to find you in the wander state. So it'll attack, and then it'll stall, and then it'll wander again. And that's the whole, I'm using timelines to control their different states. And it works really, really great, actually. I've, this is my old system right here, and I was using, this was a big pain. It was so complicated. This took me like five days to set up, and then the timelines took me like a day. It was way faster. So then I just start the timeline, and the enemy will go through those specific steps, because all these do is set the state. So it just sets the state to attack, sets the state to stall, and sets the state to wander. And that I'm super proud of that I'm actually gonna do another RPG tutorial for you guys and I will show you guys some of the some of the ways that I've set up the artificial intelligence in this and how I'm doing that so you guys can kinda see some of the things that I'm doing one more thing I want to show you is the particles so this is my uh, this is my fire particle right here and you can see really the only trick to it is that I'm setting a blend it's a uh, red, yellow, and orange. Red, orange, and yellow, I guess, are the three colors for this particle. And if you don't understand what I'm talking about here, go watch my particles video, because I explain this. 
But this right here, this part type blend equals true. This is the whole trick to why the fire looks so cool and kind of, you know, it's just a blend. I mean, just using a blend mode and it's really quite easy to do it. And so um, you guys should be able to do it as well. So that's kind of the progress that I'm at so far. I'd like to show you guys some more stuff. I'm hoping to get a demo um, ready soon for the Patreon backers. Um, and I'll, I'll have a demo out that they can play. So I'm hoping to get that set up. I was I redid the artificial intelligence and I want to get the rooms and the score set up. But that's about all I have left to do until the demo. And so I can get a demo, get some feedback from some of you guys. And I'm super excited for it. And keep, I'll keep you guys tuned. So watch for more development videos. If you enjoyed this one, if you think you learned something from it, like it and share it with your friends. And I will talk to you guys later.